The visionaries for the Institute for Quantum Computing, or what we normally call IQC. Um, I'll wait for, for everybody else to come. If I, if I could ask you, if it's possible, if I could ask you to, uh, to try to walk with me a little bit uh, faster, or try to stay with the group as close as possible so that... <laughs> uh, very good idea, you're welcome to sit down. Uh, if you see the stairs, even the way it's, they're all floating, it's, it's pretty much one of the, it's a very beautiful design and it had, it had something in mind why this staircase actually connects all six floors of the building. And no matter where you are in the staircase, you always, always have the capability to, going up, see about four floors. And there's a reason also behind it, because uh, back in 2002, visionaries for the Institute of Quantum Computing, uh, back then it was the, the, uh, the uh, president for the university, uh, David Johnson, who is now governor of Canada, uh, and Mike Lazaridis, who was co-founder of Research in Motion Blackberry. They, this is back in 2002, they envisioned this institution, this research quantum physics, because they had this vision that, yeah, it is, it is where things are probably going to go, and we are really behind on it, and we have nothing in this university. And so they were really the, the pioneers, they were the ones who, who kind of brought this, this app to the university, uh, and then they were thinking about, okay, well, who, who's going to spearhead it? Like, who's going to be the director? Like, who, who's the head? And they brought in... Uh, Professor Raymond Laflamme. Uh, I, I think some of you might already know him. How many of you have like physics background? Like mathematics, physics? Good. Uh, astronomy, chemistry, construction, construction, cool. Uh, electronics, electrical, no? Uh, mechatronics. <laughs> Nano engineering, kind of guys working. Okay. So they bring Ray, or what we call we call him Ray. Um, his name is Ray Mollaflam, but we call him Ray. He and he he was brought in 2002. He was brought in by uh, Mike, Mike Lasseridis, and, and David, uh, Mr. David. <laughs> and uh, we tend to use his first names in here a lot. Because if I try to use hi professor, they don't like it. Stop calling me professor, just say my name. No. <laughs> uh, and they, they brought him in and they said, can you be the director? And well, he, he, he started in 2002 only with two people in a little office. And now it's three buildings. This is only one building for IQC. But we have three buildings. It's just the other ones are very far north, in the very north section of the of campus. We would have to take a huge bus to get there. And, uh, and it has all together between the two buildings, about 40 more labs, lab only. It's a research facility. Um, and just to give you a little bit of history, you know Stephen Hawkins, right? I think the question is who doesn't know him? Well, Ray, it's a student, was a student of Stephen, Stephen Hawkins. And he was the very first student who actually proved Stephen Hawkins wrong, ever, first ever. So Stephen Hawkins had the idea that the, the, the universe was had the shape of a boomerang. And mathematically, Ray proved them that he was wrong, that it was not in the shape of a boomerang, that it has this kind of expanding motion. And Stephen Hawking said, you're right, I'm wrong. Okay, that's it, fine. And from that point on, Stephen Hawking never saw Ray as a student or, or as a, an assistant, per se. Started seeing him more as a colleague. And so there is a lot, there's a lot of respect between Stephen Hawking and, and Ray. And that's why Stephen Hawking comes to the Institute uh, in, in special occasions for the grand opening of the building. He was here. Uh, I have never seen so many students interested in one single person 
there were lineups in order to like take pictures outside and it was just this massive thing it was just chaos just to try to see me. Uh, so that's why the history of Stephen Hawking because it's a very close relationship. And the building was designed in that sense. So Ray has this idea that collaboration is primary for research to advance. So that's why it's so open. Offices are open, like you know, the glass, all the white, you, you will see white. I mean, these are white glass, but it's not glass, they're used as boards, white boards. So, you, you, and you'll see them, you, you will walk around. Um, if, if a professor has a lab here, let's say in the basement, their office, it's on the fourth floor, which means I have to go, this, we are two levels below ground, by the way. So there's a mezzanine level and the basement level. And so if the, if, the, if the lab is here, Ray said, ah, your office is going to be up on the third floor, which means that the people have to actually get out of the labs and travel and have the opportunity to always mingle with someone. So it's done on purpose, right? It's like, I want everything open. Uh, I, I, he was envisioning something in, no matter where you are in the stairs, you can always see somebody. And he will remember, oh, I got to talk to such professor. I forgot to mention this. No matter where you are, you can, and I prefer to take the stairs because you're walking up, down, whatever, and you always would see somebody, no matter where you are in the field. Right? So it's very open. A lot of events happen in this building because it's so open. And nat nat natural light happens you know, just because of all the big windows all around it. Um, just to give you a little bit of history why. So a lot of the labs in this building, and I can see all the labs are on this side. All the offices on this side, and it's for that purpose. It's like if you have a lab there and you need to go to your office, you gotta socialize, you gotta interact with others, get out of your lab, and then go to your office, and then and have that collaboration going on all the time. Okay, we go. We okay. Uh, we'll take the we'll take the elevator to go to the third floor, and I'll show you this really cool place. It's called Mind Spaces. And there's a reason why they're called mind space. So we'll take the elevator in two groups, uh, and then we'll we'll go from there.